<laughs> so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, I will talk a little bit about our work where we are investigating with simulated simulations in both clean fact in graphene oxide built resonators that we fabricated via the two photon polymerization technique. So, just uh, a brief introduction about the two photon polymerization technique is a direct laser light uh, process where we exploit the nonlinear structure of light to inscribe a structure within the volume of our photoresist. So we induce the polymerization with two photons, so it occurs only in the focus of the objective. So we can sweep our focus in the volume of our resist. Then we can wash out the non-polymerized resist and we have our structure in our substrate. It's a convenience technique to fabricate uh, 3D polymeric structures and it's convenient because it's a straightforward process. Uh, so it's not required complex steps for clean room environments, things like that. Uh, we have been exploring this technique to fabricate whispering gallery mold resonators. So some years ago, we developed a method to fabricate resonators with low, uh, high optical quality, low surface roughness, and they present high two factors whispering gallery mold resonances. And we have been exploring a feature of the two photo polymerization technique, which is simple to dope the resist and fabricate functionalized structures. So among some things that we are doping, doping our structures, uh, we can say fluorescent anodiamonds, contain mini centers, dispersed red, dispersed red, 13 dye, so we can control and tune the spring and remote resonances of the uh, rhodamine, it's also a dye, and we have demonstrated laser action with this dope resonators and also graphene oxide. It's the focus of this work. Uh, so for the graphene oxide dope resonators, we observe a mold clean effects in the whispering gallery mold resonance. So in blue, we have the undoped resonator. We can see a rich family of resonance, uh, really sharp with a high Q factor. But then for the dope resonator, we see that the, the many of these resonance cannot be seen anymore. Uh, it's happened on both, on both polarizations. Uh, and one interesting feature is that although some resonance are missing, the remaining resonance, they're not so different from the undoped resonators. So although some resonances are not present in the doped resonators, the Q factor of the remaining resonance uh, is not drop significantly. So I would like to try to uh, investigate this both thinning effect. And something to note is that we already uh, ruled out the contributions of nonlinear effects, and also we see that this is an effect that's independent of the polarization of the lines. Uh, first, we try to explicitly simulate the resonators. So this is a clinical in simulations where we launch a field here in the tapered, tapered optical fiber, inducing the resonance uh, into our cylinder, and we analyze the transmission here. So for low losses, for one polar polarization, we have our family of sharp resonances. Uh, but in order to observe some uh, mold clean effect in the simulations, we need to we only see that in the simulations we have absorption values that are that is way higher than the ones we observe experimentally. And also in the simulations, because that when you see some uh, molds missing or merging with each other, the light width of all resonance they draw the middle. It's not what we are observing in our experiments. So we are trying to hypothesize that the dopant is inducing no uniform distribution of losses in the resonator. So uh, we are trying to hypothesize because the nature of the Wispin Gallery mode. So this is a simulation of two different modes a low radial order mode and a higher radial order mode. So if we have some losses here, these modes would not feel these losses. And on the other hand, if you have some losses here at the ring of resonator, this mold will feel these losses uh, more than this mold, since most of the energy of this mold is in the inner part of the resonator. So we can simulate that. We can simulate a non-uniform distribution of losses in the resonator. So when the losses are near the inner part of the resonator, the lower radial orders, the two factor will not drop. And when we start to move these losses, into the outer part of the resonator, you see that the, the slower radial orders, they start to feed it more than the lower radial orders. 
only two of the losses are outside of resonator, and the two factors are pretty much the same. So we would like to investigate that if looking for each independent radial order of our resonances and look up their Q factors, we can get some information of how the losses are distributed inside our, of our resonator. So uh, this is the model that we're going to use. We use a non-uniform radial loss distribution, which we use a Gaussian loss distribution in the radial part of the resonator. And we we'll adjust the parameters of this distribution in order to try to get the simulated two factors uh, equal the experimental ones. So we try to look for what kind of loss distribution the resonator would explain for experimental data. So the losses would be modeled like Gaussian uh, distribution in the radial direction. And we have these four free parameters, the non-uniform peak distribution, the peak position in the radial direction, our reduction distribution, the dispersion, and a uniform loss, an offset loss that's we put in our scenario. And we try to run some optimization algorithm in order to try to optimize parameters, minimizing this function, which is just the summation of the Q factors of each radial order from the experimental results with the simulated ones. Uh, so the first thing you need to do work is to classify each resonance into the radial orders. And you're gonna do that uh, based on the free spectral range of each resonance. So we have the same analytical expression from the free spectral range, which depends on the effect index of the mode. We can uh, look for the propagation constants in the azimuthal direction, and we can relate this uh, effective index with the azimuthal order of the mean. And you know that this azimuthal order is inversely proportional to the radial order. So uh, we have that the free spectral range is actually proportional to the radial order. So lower radial order modes, they have a smaller uh, free spectral range. That's a little catch this because this is only total valid for a whole resonator. Our resonators have this gap in the middle. So you can see that for a higher order modes, uh, it will interact a little bit with the air here in the inner part of the resonator. So what we, we have to adapt this relation a little bit. So we use simulated free spectral range, simulated uh, family of resonances, and, and use the order of the simulated uh, spectrums to classify our free spectral range. So we just have this change in the seventh order and the sixth uh, radial order here. So what we did is in gray area, this gray spectrum is the original experimental spectrum, and the blue one is the next free spectral range of our nodes. Then we bring them together into we match the first uh, resonance. So this resonance is the one with the lowest free spectral range, uh, hence is the first order radial resonance. And then we can see that we have different uh, free spectral range for the other resonance. Then we classify them with respect to the free spectral range. Next, we have to relate the resonance for the undop spectrum uh, to the, sorry, the undop spectrum here to the dual spectrum. And although the radius and the index they vary a little bit, you still can relate these resonances in the doped spectrum with the undoped spectrum. So here is the whole spectrum with both polarizations, and we highlighted here the resonance that we're relating with the doped spectrum. Uh, then we model the Q factor. So what you measure in the experiment is actually the low Q factor that comes for two contributions. One is the intrinsic Q factor of the resonator, and another one is the coping Q factor, which accounts for the coping losses. Uh, this one we know, but this is what we have experimentally, and we can simulate it, this one with finite animation simulations, aiding value simulations, uh, using the null circuit coefficient for the under resist. So we have this experimentally, we can simulate this, so we can estimate this cube coupling. And uh, this cube coupling we got from the experimental data fitting a Lorentzian curve of the, of the resonances. 
But so uh, this is the results that we got. So we run some optimization algorithms in order to optimize the parameters of our loss distribution in order to match the uh, two factors of the experimental results of experimental data. So uh, in orange here, these are the experimental view factors that we measured for each weighted order, and in blue is the simulation view factor after the optimization of the loss distribution. And just as a reference here, uh, we simulated as well, considering a symmetric distribution, and we see that we cannot uh, fit at the same time the two factors from the lower radial orders with the higher radial orders. So indicating that, in fact, we have a much symmetric loss distribution in our simulator. And if we see the plots of how the losses are distributed inside our simulator, uh, these results indicated that the losses are we have a more the losses are more intense in the inner parts of the resonator. So uh, the next step would like to investigate what could cause these non symmetric losses in the inner part of the resonator. So uh, look at the fabrication process. What we do is build the resonator layer by layer with concentric circles, then we do concentric circles in the middle of the resonator, then the wing are increasing the radius and doing another concentric center and going into the outer part of the resonator. Uh, and in the process, the radial velocity is constant. So uh, this velocity is constant. So the angular velocity for the inner, rate, inner circles are higher than from the outer circles, which means that the weights that we are irradiating these points are about 35% higher than the heights that we are irradiating the other points of the circle. So this is uh, one radial asymmetry in our fabrication process that maybe could be responsible for this asymmetry in the losses. And also we know that uh, although the linear absorption of the reflux site is small, the region that we are exciting our structures is not zero. So one thing that we'd like to investigate with her in the future is that is this feature of the fabrication process leading to some uh, concentration of dopant or some damage in the inner part of resonators more than the outer part of resonators. So uh, in conclusion, our results indicate that the losses uh, in our geo doped resonators are not even distributed in the structure. And uh, we see that they have some radial symmetry that's possible due to fabrication process. So in the next step, we'd like to figure out some ways of permanently observing these asymmetry losses. One way to do that for Raman spectroscopy, so we can carry out Raman spectroscopy in the inner part of the resonator and the outer part of the resonator and see if we have a different concentration or some structural difference uh, between these two parts of the resonator. Uh, we also would like to try a more robust way to classify the radial order modes because this is a critical part of this work. And we can try to change the fabrication process to verify the hypothesis. So we can adapt the fabrication process to mitigate this radial symmetry and see if we have some different results in our spectrum. That's what uh, we have today. Thank you very much.